and welcome to the Market Outlook webinar with me, David Jones, and in association with Aondo Markets. If you're watching the recorded version of this, it was held live on Wednesday the 15th of Feb at 12.30 uh, lunchtime. This is one we do every week on a Wednesday lunchtime, and it's a look back over the last couple of days, see what's been moving markets, and to look ahead to maybe where the opportunities are in the days and the weeks ahead. I, I do another webinar with Aondo twice a month as well on social trading. We did one last night and I'll tweet out the, the link to that on my Twitter feeds. But if you find out a bit more about social trading, I've written a bit on my website. If you go to tradeafter.com, uh, there's some information up there. I'll just put up the risk warning um, while I'm talking away. There's a lot to look at today. Um, we had this the speech from Janet Yellen yesterday, uh, the, the, the boss of the US Federal Reserve, the US's central bank, and it's really raised expectations on interest rates for this year. I think speculation we might get three interest rate rises uh, for this year. I think one definitely in June, maybe one in March and one in December. Uh, and, and the knock-on effect of that yesterday uh, was that we saw a dollar rally. You know, Traditionally, if interest rates go up for a currency, there are lots of things that affect it, but one of the things that that will propel a currency higher is the expectation of, of uh, increased interest rates. So we saw some big dollar moves yesterday, relatively speaking. And it does continue the theme we were talking about last week when we looked at the dollar index, that maybe there's a dollar recovery coming. And that continues. We'll have a look at some of these markets in a sec and some of the non-dollar markets as well, because a lot of the, the sort of the, the dollar-based currency pairs all look pretty much the same. Uh, following that move yesterday. Before we start properly, let's have a quick word from our sponsors. So Aondo are well known for social trading. You can do your own self-directed trading as well, but they're running a social trading championship. So if you fancy yourself as a bit of a top trader who other people can follow, uh, you can you can find out more and enter this competition. There's $250,000 up for grabs. Uh, and to find out more, if you go to the website next-trading-star.com, you'll see some details uh, on there of this trading championship and you'll see how well or how badly, of course, uh, people are doing at the moment. So that's uh, that's Aondo's trading championship. Right, let's, let's start off then. This, these are the charts. So we're using Aondo's Trade Hub platform. What I've done, this is the euro against the dollar, just really to demonstrate the move yesterday. So I think the details of the speech were released yesterday and you can see, I mean, that's really when, when they came out. You can see the, the big move, what we're seeing here, big fall, relatively speaking in the euro against the dollar. So what we're seeing there is uh, is dollar strength, euro weakness, dollar strength. You know, and if we will flip through some other markets in a sec and see how that looks. But a big move yesterday, uh, expectations, interest rates are going to go up, <clears throat> maybe by more than expected uh, in the USA, and that's lifted the dollar across the board. So stuff like gold, of course, got clobbered, the pound against the dollar got clobbered, you know, anything quoted against the dollar, we saw dollar strength uh, yesterday. While we're on euro dollar, Let's take a look at, at the bigger picture because it's still slipping. Um, I think it's interesting. You can see this is a daily chart that we're looking at now. You can see fairly how relentless the, the, the decline has been over the last couple of weeks or so. You know, we've got almost you know red days every day uh, in in euro dollar. So it's still definitely weak. But I think what will be interesting is what happens if and when we get back down to these 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 lows from late November, early December, we've sort of highlighted these quite a bit because it surprised me that the euro slipped below those those lows that, a bit, that were in place all the way through 2015. At the end of last year, it broke below that and people were talking about parity for the euro against the dollar, you know, where it goes, slips down to one. So I think it's going to be a real test for the euro if we do go back to these levels. If we do go back and bounce, to me it looks like a buying opportunity, but for me at the moment on euro dollar, it's a bit of a, a bit of a wait and see, and see what happens. Let me show you another dollar chart, um, and then I think that will probably be, we'll, we'll look at pound against the dollar as well, then we'll flip off the dollar for a while. But um, dollar Swiss, I talked about this a bit last week. I, I did do a trade on this. I think it's a great example of a trend that we've had in dollar Swiss and a trend reversal. It's been quite a good proxy for the dollar as a whole. Let me just zoom out and, and sort of show you what I'm talking about. So this is the dollar against the Swiss franc going back uh, about three months now, back to December. Is that three months? Two months. And it's the, it was the perfect, the perfect setup. And um, I mean, I don't think, <clears throat> I wrote quite a bit about charting yesterday for somebody. And I think one of the problems, I think when you're new to markets, as we all are at some point, 
is that you can maybe see charting as some sort of you know magic crystal ball that predicts the future. But as sure as we all know, if we've, if we've traded using charts, the textbook examples, you know, you don't often see them in the real world. But this was this was a pretty good textbook example, uh, and it's a similar move that we saw in the dollar basket that we were talking about uh, last week. So we'd had this downtrend in dollar Swiss, and um, early Feb, it shows signs of actually managing a sustainable recovery. You know, we'd had the odd few days of rallies in the downtrends, but only for it to plunge a bit lower uh, and, and continue that trend lower. But since then, you can see it's turned around and it's still going. I, I, I got out last week. I came out on Friday. I got stopped out for a profit, and I've not got back in. And the trend has continued. But we have, um, I think, great trends in dollar Swiss at the moment. And it's a similar trend. If you, I don't think the dollar basket or the dollar index is available on Ayando's platform. Um, but I've been tweeting a few charts of it over the last week. It's a similar chart for the dollar basket, and that's the dollar weighted against the euro, the yen, the pound, the Swiss franc, and some others. And it's a similar sort of move. And I think so. What we're seeing here, you know, in the last couple of weeks, is a real turnaround uh, for the dollar's fortunes. So for me, I wouldn't want to be a buyer up here. I'm gonna. I think I got in sort of here on the bounce on the retest. I think it was. Was it Wednesday, Thursday last week? Wednesday last week on the retest of this low, and I think a stop underneath here. The market moved higher, and I got taken out on a little wobble. Um, and the market has moved a little bit higher still. For me, I think the opportunity is if it happens, if we get a, a sell-off from current levels. So we have had, you know, some, some quite strong dollar moves in recent days. And I think for me, the opportunity is if we see a bit of weakness. So, so the sort of levels I'll be watching. This is on. Um, on dollar Swiss, yeah, these old lows, you know, it's the it's the stuff I think that I talk about quite a bit. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of looking at looking at old lows and seeing how the market performs around them. So if we do see the market start to sell off, that that the textbook trade would be if we got back down to these sort of levels because we've got the trend line support coming in. We've got the old lows from um, just under a week ago as well. So, but for me, the dollar is a uh, a buy buy the dips at the moment, particularly when you look at things like dollar Swiss and the dollar basket. Let's just do have a quick look at pound against the dollar. I think last week I remember saying it just looks a bit choppy and a bit boring. And, and that's still very much the case. You know, it's um where were we a week ago? It was the it was the eighth, wasn't it? So we were around about here and we have just chopped. We're, we're a bit lower again following that that move yesterday and I think with the US UK unemployment data out today, it's put this made the pound slip a little bit lower. But for me it just look it just looks chopped still. You know, we'd had that that got good run during during jam, uh, and it just feels a little bit directionless. You know, I, th I think it's clearly a currency, as we all know at the moment, that, that maybe it's not so much the economic fundamentals, it's the politics, it's the whole Brexit discussion and what that looks like that drives the pound. So um, it looks a little bit boring. Um, I've got a trade on at the moment. It's an options trade. Some of you may have heard me talk about options in the dim and distant past. And basically, the maximum profit is if it's at 125 a week on Friday. So for me, I've got fingers crossed for a boring, boring 10 days uh, to come. We'll see what happens. But I think um, you know we've got quite a bit of support uh, just below. <coughs> excuse me, not not a million miles away from the current price. Maybe I need a four-hour chart to get a good look at that. There we go. So we've got we've got you know pockets of support coming in. Uh, these levels here. I did think it would have bounced back yesterday after it got knocked, and it, it sort of hovered around, but it has slipped lower today. 123, sort of 50-ish is a level to watch, about 70 points below where we are now. But you can see it's just been a bit of a bit of a choppy market pan against the dollar. The other interesting one, uh, and this is the last the last dollar one we'll do, I think, is uh, is it dollar yen? Or, no, it's not dollar yen. I think, or is it sterling yen? Let me remind myself. Oh no, it is, it is dollar yen. So look at the daily charts on dollar yen. This is one that we've tracked quite a bit over the last six months. You know, we had that, that massive rally uh, end of last year for the dollar against the yen, going from 102 up to 118, 1600 point move in dollar yen. And it's been quite sort of corrective since then. But but again, I think with the moves yesterday, maybe we're seeing uh, the dollar gearing up. For another run back at these highs, so I think if we if we stick on the dailies for now, on the daily charts, you know we've got the old highs up there. So I think if you were a like a medium term trader, that, that 118.60 level is a good target. So you know 400 points away from where we are now, is is that a big target? We've got this little dibble of support from November, 111.35 that's held. So um, 
for me, it's definitely building the case for uh, for maybe some dollar strength for here. Uh, ideally, I wouldn't want to buy it here. If we get if we get a move back and a bounce, that gives us a better risk reward. But if we look on the hourlies, on the, on the dollar yen chart, let me just zoom this out. You know, it does sort of it does build the argument for those of you who are a fan of the trend line. If, I suppose if we drew our trend, oh, I've drawn that drawn that badly. If we drew it something like that, you know, the, the strength we've seen yesterday. Uh, has taken that that downtrend out. That downtrend that's been in place, a bit like the dollar Swiss one, it's been in place since the beginning of Jan. So it, it does point to maybe a shift now in dollar yen. So I'd be more inclined to be a buyer of dips. I think I think based on this hourly chart, I was doing some calculations this morning. So for me, based on the hourlies, and I really for stuff like this, I do only really trade off hourly charts. But um, you know that 112.86 was a bit of a spiky support. So I wouldn't mind my stop if I was trading it the closest I have it at the moment, probably the other side of that 112.70. But it's a long way away from it. Again, the ideal setup if it sold off a bit and pulled back into yesterday's range, showed a bit of support, maybe there's a trade there. We'll see. Sticking with uh, the yen thingy at the moment, the yen side at the moment, sterling yen is an interesting one. So, so the pound against the yen is pretty boring. Pound against the dollar is pretty boring on the daily charts. But um, last year we saw sterling have a bit of a run higher uh, against the yen. And again, we had the correction, which looks to be over, a little correction again. And I do wonder if sterling yen, we might see it clearer on the hourly chart, is gearing up uh, for maybe you know something of a, of a push higher. Maybe we've seen it already. I, I did a trade on this last week and got stopped out. Uh, I was looking at, I think it was, was it Friday maybe, where the market had been in decline and it rallied, yeah, was it here? Or maybe it was here, I don't know. But I was, I was looking for these highs, these old highs to hold and for it to have another, another look down at the lows, sort of that sort of level. But it, it blasted through and it's taken out my stop. I got stopped out. But I think you know, the, the strength we've seen since then, you know, clearly you know, we've seen something of an uptrend. This maybe stalled a bit over uh, uh, today. But you know the argument is well we've got pretty good support left here over the last few days ahead of 141. It's another one that maybe looks you know for the shorter term trader a buy and a dip and maybe a push back up to have a look at 145. So I think sterling yen it's not one we we look at very often on here, but I think it is it is an interesting one. I'll stick with currencies for a bit. There are two more I want to look at. Euro sterling. Oh, I'm I'm sort of kicking myself on euro sterling a little bit because I'm still in the trade from about a week ago. I gave back a whole chunk of profit. Um, so on, on the dailies, um, this is the euro against the pounds, and of course we had the the, the post EU referendum rally in the euro. The markets moved higher, moved up to near 92, sold off. But again, the old big levels, the old big support, sort of post Brexit surge, or Brexit vote surge, 82.50 held the market up, you know, and so we did see it, the euro strength come back in. During um, during November, and the market has sold off, you know. But once again, we saw a bit of euro strength coming in last week, and I bought it. Was it this time last week? I can't remember. I'll, I'll know when I see the chart. So I bought it. Uh, was it? I think it was. Was it eighty? I think I've got. Is it eighty four twenty in my head? Maybe maybe it was down here somewhere. I can. No, it wasn't down there. I'm talking rubbish. Maybe it was eighty five. Eighty five fifteen. I bought it, and it ran up to eighty six forty. But because I had quite a wide stop in it, I wouldn't. Let, I needed it to move a little bit higher before I moved my stop, and I've given all that profit back, and I'm sitting on maybe a 15-point loss at the moment. So it's a bit of a bit of rubbish trade management, I think, for me. But but for me, the argument here from here it still stands. If euro sterling is going to rally, you know, we're back to levels that this year, 84.50, um, end of Jan. Was that at around about 84.70 have been something of a springboard for the euro against the pound. So, so at the moment, my bias is still for a run back up to 86.50. So I'd still be bullish on on the euro versus the pound. And I think the bullish argument only really goes if you're a longer term trader. If we lose these old levels from back here in sort of the 82.50 area. So there's lots to watch to wrap up the currency side. Actually, I'll do one more. Then we'll then we'll move on to to bonds, commodities, and stock markets. There's lots to watch, um, but I think um, dollar Swiss is a really interesting one, just because it's been uh, quite an obedient, you know, really sort of quite quite obedient chart in terms of turning that trend round and that trend 
chugging higher. Pound against the dollar, a little bit boring. Euro dollar still weak. Let's see how the euro performs if it gets back to the lows from the end of last year. And the other one is Aussie dollar, US dollar. I put something on Twitter about this this morning. And I've gone short, actually, in the end. I had to, I'm not sure it's the, maybe the greatest decision in the world. But um, this is the hourly chart. So yesterday, just to remind ourselves, we've seen a really quite the run in the Australian dollar this year. Here we go. So we've gone from these lows around about the 72 mark, below 72, up near 77. So we've seen a 500-point rally in the Australian dollar in, in January. But in the last the last couple of weeks or so, it's really struggled with this level. Um, so the level looks something like that. It's sort of just ahead of 77. You can see, you know, Feb the second, the trend was still strong. Runs out of steam. Next day, can't break it. And this was this was quite a strange thing because it did have a period of going sideways and then moving higher. Uh, drifted a little bit. Uh, yesterday again goes up to this level sells off, breaks yesterday's low on that, that Yellen speech thing on the dollar, and it's bounced back again today. So I, I thought, well, really, you know, my strategy is to go to trade near big levels. This has been a massive level for a couple of weeks. So even though I think that trend is being pretty strong, if it's going to run out of steam anywhere, this is the area. So in terms of risk-reward, it's a great risk-reward trade. So if it collapses, I'll be patting myself on the back. But um, and my stop is, is above 7,700. So I think Aussie dollar is a really interesting one to watch because it's knocking its head up at these levels. You know, but I don't. I think any sell-off, you know, there are still lots of pockets of support, 100 or so points below where we are now. So I'm not sure if it does slide how far it would go. It's doing all right so far. I think I'm about seven points in profit at the moment. We'll see. We'll see how that works. But that's an interesting one to watch. But I think it has. With that Yellen speech yesterday, it's been all dollar. The last the last day or so. So um, and, and with some of the moves we've seen, I think it does point to the the weeks and the months ahead, seeing more of a U.S. dollar recovery. Let's see what happens. So but if we look at stock markets, let's look at something a little bit different. We, we um, let me see if I've got it on my list. Here we go. T bonds. So I talk a bit about in the past about bonds, German government bonds, um, but I don't think we've looked at T bonds before. T bonds is a massive market, but in my experience. Not so much for for your average sort of private investor traders, um, but you know, in terms of futures markets, it's a really massive market, and it's the U.S. government bonds. You know, this is what we're looking at, and it's really interesting. It got um, this this is this has been the moves on the daily chart, um, and we've seen something of a recovery over the last couple of months, and that's really what I want to focus on. The bonds, T bonds, got clobbered yesterday. This is an hourly candle, so you can see the big red move down on the expect, expectation interest rate is going to go up. Now, I am by no stretch of the imagination a bond expert, but when interest rates go up, or the expectation of interest rates going up increases, bond prices uh, traditionally go down. But I think T-bonds are an interesting one because we have had um, quite the run-up in the last, the last few weeks, and it's, it's a really, it's quite a technical market to trade, you know, in terms of things like uh, support and resistance. You know, we have this old support from the end of, end of Jan, they did a great job for quite a few days, you know, holding the dips up, little buying opportunities off that. The market rallied uh, from 150 to 153 and a half, so that's a 350 point move in about a week, and it's given it all back, you know. But it did, I mean, it, clearly it, it collapsed on the Yellen stuff yesterday, but we have seen something of a bounce. So for me, it's an interesting one. It is another market that I'll trade and keep an eye on, and it's an interesting one to see. If these old lows hold, you know, could we see another rotation back up in, in U.S. Treasuries? And it's a similar sort of pattern if you ever look at bonds, the German bonds. So um, T bonds, I think, another interesting market to keep an eye on. Let's talk about stock markets, though. The bull market continues. Um, incredibly, yesterday, yes, again, yesterday. Where is it? S and P, S and P 500. So this is the broader, the broader U.S. stock market. Oh, I think I've managed to. Uh, Kill my chart there. Hold on a second. Let me tidy that up. Where is it? S and P. You you are a braver man than me if you bet against this market at the moment. So uh, there's the dailies. There's the the bigger picture for the S and P. The, the strange spiky move there. That's of course the the overnight market when Mr. Trump was uh, surprisingly elected and we saw a collapse in the overnight market. Then a turnaround. Uh, and then look at it since then. The market has just climbed 
higher still. So, so fresh all-time highs hit yesterday. Um, there's the hourly chart. So it looks like overnight as well in the overnight market, the S&P has poked out to fresh all-time highs. And what can you say? You've just got to be a buyer. You know, you've got to be. It's, it's always. It's you know, we know how an important a part psychology plays in trading. And I think if you look at a market like that, you think, well, how much higher can it really go? But there are plenty of people who have thought that all the way up, you know, and trying to pick the top in this market and getting their fingers burnt. So for me, you know, I just want to be a buyer. Uh, and the problem is when we see a big move like yesterday, let's just, if we flip it over to a shorter term chart, the problem I always have in markets like this is where to set my stop. Now the closest I would want my stop are the lows from yesterday, which are around about 23, 22. That's 15 S&P points away from where we are now. It's about 150 Dow points, something like that. It's a big stop, you know. So I, I do have a problem, I think, in runaway markets like this in trying to get on them. But the strategy is, you know, the strategy is if it does drift back to the previous day's low, and it's done it now and again when it hasn't gone off to the races. You know that that's that can be one opportunity to jump on board a trend with a stop underneath those lows. But you you cannot argue with the strength in these U.S. markets. But you can, but you know you would have you would have lost money over the last few months most probably. So look at if you look at the Dow, it's a similar similar thing. Obviously, where is it? Where is the Dow? There we go. Similar sort of moves. There we go. There's the Dow. So we had some some quite weird trading. And an opportunity that I missed. Uh, you know, we had we had the breakout, but this markets were late December and for much of January going nowhere. And the Dow breaks finally breaks that twenty thousand level that everyone was nattering on about. Runs up, comes back, and that was the opportunity to buy. Harry hindsight trades. You know, comes back maybe a stop under here somewhere. Why to stop? And it's just gone almost uh, parabolic <laughs> since then. And of course, at some point, it will stop going parabolic, but. What are the chances if you sold it today, you picked the right day? I don't know. I think it's um. I think if you're in them, it's a great. If you're in and you've got a trade on, it's brilliant because all you do is you trail your stop loss up behind the market, and if the market goes higher and higher, you just trail your stop up just to try and lock in more profits, but win a bit more as well. But I think I do find them hard markets uh, to to jump on board. We'll do one last um, U.S. market. Have I got it on my list? The Nasdaq. The Nasdaq has been. I think I'm a bit remiss in that I don't really look at the Nasdaq very often, but I looked at it this morning and thought, well, I've got to, I've got to do it in today's webinar because it's, it's such, it really is a textbook trend. So let me look, let me show you. I'm going to start trading this afternoon. It's sort of that trend is going to end, but um, maybe not quite the same degree of parabolicness that we've seen in the, the Dow and the S&P. But what a fantastic trend, you know, that has been. So. Uh, Again, in the Nasdaq, you know, if we if we did get weakness to to, to yesterday's lows ahead of 52.40, looks like a buying opportunity. But so many support levels left on the way up. I am going to have to start paying uh, more attention, I think, to that. And it's maybe maybe there's you know maybe it it doesn't have the same degree of volatility that the Dow and the S and P have. It wouldn't have been the case, of course, back in the dot com boom. But um, maybe it's a smoother market to trade. I don't know. And maybe I'll keep a more of a closer watch on it in the days ahead and see how I get on over the next week. But um, yeah, US markets still incredibly, incredibly strong. Um, European markets, of course, uh, you know, following the lead there. If you look at look at the FTSE, so that is, let's look at the, the bigger picture for the FTSE. So not at all time highs. You know, we had that period, didn't we? December, January. I think it was in January every day it was making a fresh all time high. It sold off a bit, but again, you know, in, in strong trends like this, you have to take any sell off as a correction. That was one I bought into and got stopped out of by about 20 points, and the markets <coughs> ramped 150 points higher. But um, it's still, you know, still a strong market. You know? So, so obvious levels to watch on the FTSE. This is the hourly chart. If you start getting back up to those highs from January, around about 73.60, 73.70. Are we going to see some nerves creeping in? And the FTSE is a bit of a scrappier market when compared to some of the others. But but once again, you, know, you can't really argue with the trends. But let's see what happens when we get back up to here. And it's a similar one for the DAX. Um, you know, this idea of support, I've got an order in to try and buy the DAX actually at 11,770. So my my try I'm doing a, trying to do I don't do much day day trading in and out the same day. But because it's been so strong. 
uh, over the last week or so, and it's been sort of ramping up higher, and it ramped up higher again this morning. Um, I thought, well, if it starts to pull back, I'll put an order in at 770 with a stop loss under yesterday's low. So we'll see how that works out. But you know, again, for the DAX, not at all-time highs, but you know, pushing out through some historical old barriers. The 11900 looks like the next one from May 2015. Then after that, we do have the all-time highs up here. What do I want? Horizontal high and low. I want. Then I. Uh, there we go. Wherever that is, there we go. So twelve four hundred. So we're we're seven hundred points away from that, six hundred points away from that. But the DAX um, still strong, you know, and just really these markets are just getting dragged up by what's going on in the U.S. So that's um, stock markets. What can you say? Still bullish. But for those of you like me who, who don't look at the the Nasdaq one hundred very often, it might be an interesting market. Maybe a bit of a smoother market to keep an eye on. To wrap things up, the two favourites. Um, <clears throat> Oil and gold. I do remember saying last week. I do. I mean, I think famously, I hate oil because I never seem to get it right. But I do remember saying last week, if you're going to buy it, maybe now's the time to buy it because uh, it it pulled back to the bottom of the range. You know, we've seen um, a bit of an uneventful year so far for oil. I don't have that much data on this, but we do have like a, a definite range. So support from wherever that is, December lows, $50.75, and a bit again in December, 51 So there's, you know, that, that sort of 50 to 51 area has been big support for oil, but it, it struggled to make much progress be, be, sort of beyond 55 So it's a bit of a, a bit of a boring, rangy market at the moment, but I think if you look to the bigger picture, the bias for oil is still up. And I, and I do think, you know, this year, we should see more of a recovery in oil, maybe into the 60s. Uh, but you know, always an interesting market to watch, but but not one that I trade because I always get it wrong. And finally, gold. We've seen gold um, lose a bit of momentum in the last the last few days. I don't think it really changes the more medium term picture. But we had seen a heck of a rally. It was a kiss of death, I think. I put it on Twitter. The gold was up $84 or, or 7% for the year. And I think that marked the, the, the temporary top. But if, you, if we stick with the, uh, the dailies for now, oh, hang on, I've done that wrong. You know, our trend looks, I suppose, you know, some, something like this. Oh, I can't, I can't draw it because I've done it wrong. We've got our trend in place. Let me flip over to maybe the hourlies and we'll see it a little bit clearer, or maybe the four hourlies. There we go. There's our, there's our big sort of gold picture. So if you were drawing a trend on gold, you'd probably take it off these just these pre-Christmas lows sort of through here. So we, we had did have a time, sort of end of Jan, up until last week, where we were just punching higher on almost a daily basis and get, got as high as 1243, 1244. It's tailed off a bit since then, but it... It doesn't, for me anyway, it doesn't change the bigger picture. You know, no market moves in a straight line forever. You know, we do need to, whether they're going down or going up, markets do cool off. So, um, you know, I'd still be inclined to be a buyer because we've got, we've got again, so many supports left. You know, we've got big support down here. Oh, not there. Sorry, wrong place. Big support. I was trying to get that spiky low. There we go. Sort of 1207, then on 1200. So I'd still be inclined to be a buyer of gold, and I think it's only if we lose the 1,200 mark does it look like this, what sort of six-week trend is in trouble. So a little bit sideways, a little bit boring the last few days, but does seem to be finding support sort of in their sort of 1,220, 1,225 area. So my money would be on for a run back up to here, and maybe 1,250. Let's see what happens. Um, so. Um, that's it, really. There's plenty to keep an eye on. You know, the, the dollar has been the big theme over the last 24 hours because expectations of interest rates have ratcheted up after that speech. So it, it does continue the story. I think that I've been talking about for a couple of weeks uh, of of the dollar being on the turn. You know, and I think nowhere is it clearer than in this uh, this dollar Swiss chart. You know, which, which we have seen turn things around. But there's still other interesting things out there as well. You know, there's still that, that gold chart still going up. Um, the Aussie dollar that I mentioned to, to talk my own book, is it going to 
manage to crack this level, or is it going to run out of steam up here? And stock market's still incredibly strong, and um, no signs of it stopping. So for now, um, we'll wrap things up. We'll do this all again, of course, next Wednesday. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll just put my my details up. So if you have any questions, you can you can drop me an email. Here we go. Uh, the best email address for me is david at tradeafter.com. If you want to find out a bit more about social trading, I started doing a blog. Was it a week ago? I've opened up another account for social trading, and I'm, I put a couple of thousand quid in, and I'm doing it sort of step by step every couple of weeks, following a new trader to see how we get on, but doing it with real money. So if you go to my website uh, and go to the blog section, there's, there's an update there, and I'll update it again next week and add another trader. When I last checked, I'd made about 98 pence so far following one trader because I'm following them uh, in a very conservative manner, but we'll add some more traders in and maybe increase the risk over the next few weeks. I'm a big fan of social trading as a way of maybe filtering out some of the day-to-day -day volatility. So that's on, on the website there. But for the Market Outlook webinar, we'll wrap it up there. We'll do it all again uh, next week. I hope you find it useful, and I hope you have a good week. Thanks.